slides to go through. Um, and then um, we'll have a question and answer period at the end. Um, so we'll go ahead, the recording started, and we'll get going. So just thank you all so much for uh, joining us today. Um, really excited about kicking off a second year of the Scale Your Local Catch program. Last year, the 21 to 2022 cohort, um, we had about 15 businesses, and it was a really great experience connecting different seafood producers um, from around the country um, to learn with each other, from each other, and kind of network as a cohort. Um, so today, for our session and talking about the Scale Your Local Catch program, um, we have a few goals in place. Um, you know, we're going to go through just a general overview of the Local Catch network. Um, and EcoTrust, that's who Maya and I work for, um, and we're helping to support the program. Um, talk a little bit about the selection criteria, the application review process. We'll get more into the program recruitment and kind of expectations. And then we'll have some time for um, conversation, some Q&A and next steps. Uh, so for the Scale Your Local Catch program, um, there's really three main coordinators that are part of this program. Uh, myself, I'm Tyson Racer, I'm the Fisheries and Food Systems Program Manager with EcoTrust, and I've been working with the or, uh, with EcoTrust since 2017. Um, I'm also on the Executive Committee with the Local Catch Network, and I've been a part of the Executive Committee for three years now, um, but have been aware and kind of active in the Local Catch Network community for um, well over five years at this point. Um, also, just would like to um, mention um, one of the rock stars out there, um, Jordan Richardson, she was unable to join us today. She's the coordinator, kind of the glue of the Local Catch Network. Um, she does a lot of things for the network, communications in between different members, um, event planning and webinars. Um, and unfortunately, she's not able to join us today, but she's one of the core pieces of the Scale Your Local Catch program. And I'll let Maya go ahead and introduce herself. Yeah, thanks, Tyson. I was just going to paste the link to the Local Catch website in the chat. If um, you're new to Local Catch, feel free. All the information about the Skill Your Local Catch program is on there, but there's a lot more to learn about Local Catch and the things that they do. Um, yeah, as Tyson said, my name is Maya Larson. Um, I'm the Director of Community Food Systems at EcoTrust, and I'll be helping to facilitate the Scale Your Local Catch program. Um, I've been working with seafood businesses through my role at EcoTrust for the last four years and have really enjoyed learning about the ins and outs of not only like the mechanics of fishing, but also just the nuances of running a seafood business. Um, my background is in agriculture. I spent the last 10 years um, farming um, on land, not in the ocean necessarily. Um, and yeah, I am based in Eugene, Oregon, and um, I don't know, excited to be here and meet you all and kick off this awesome program. Thanks, Maya. Um, looking a little more at the who, about us and who we are. Um, so for EcoTrust, for those of you that may not be familiar with uh, EcoTrust, it's a nonprofit organization. Um, EcoTrust's mission is to inspire fresh thinking that creates economic opportunity, social equity, and environmental well-being. Um, and our goal is to foster a natural model of development that creates more resilient communities, economies, and ecosystems. Um, and our staff for the organization work in food systems, farming, ranching, fisheries and seafood, forestry, water and watersheds, mapping, database management, and software development, and, and we work in, in more areas than that. Um, EcoTrust was established in 1991 in Portland um, on the traditional lands of the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde, um, Clatsop, Nehalem Confederated Tribes, Confederated Tribes of the Sluts Indians, the Kathlamet, and the Chinook. Um, EcoTrust focuses its work on serving communities within the kind of our connected bioregion, um, ranging from Northern California to Oregon, Washington, and all the way up into Alaska. Um, and more about the Local Catch Network. The Local Catch Network was established in 2011. The Local Catch Network is a community of, of practice made up of seafood harvesters, technical assistance providers, organizers, and researchers from across North America who are committed to strengthening local and regional food systems. 
through community supported fisheries and direct seafood marketing. Um, the network is supported by the executive committee uh, made up of fishermen and technical assistance providers and tribal representatives um, for the United States and Canada and has a institutional support, um, kind of backbone support to the organization um, from the North American Marine Alliance, NAMA, and the University of Maine. Um, it's important to note that both Josh and Jordan are, um, Josh Stoll, who's the founder of Local Catch, and Jordan Richardson, who's the coordinator of the program, are uh, technically employees of the University of Maine. Scale Your Local Catch is um, a sponsored organization. Um, and the University of Maine um, does recognize that it's located on the Marsh Island of the homeland of the Penobscot Nation, um, where issues of water and, and territorial rights and encroachment upon sacred sites are ongoing. Um, Penobscot homeland is connected to other um, Wabanaki tribal nations um, through kinship, alliances, and diplomacy. Um, and the university also recognizes that the Penobscot Nation and the Winnabaki tribes, um, tribal nations are distinct, sovereign, legal, and political entities within their own powers of self-governance and self-determination. Okay, um, so getting through our introductions there, um, just more about the Scalar Local Catch program. Um, once again, the, the Local Catch Network has been around since 2011. Um, and in that time and in the organizational growth, I think there's been a lot of recognition that um, as, as the work has been done and continued conversations have happened amongst the membership, um, there's just been a lot, of, a lot of recognition of challenges of what it takes to be a community-based producer um, and working in a world where um, you know, a lot of the community-based producers, the, the, the kind of values-driven producers that are out there are not only selling and marketing their fish, but they're also the, fisher, the fishers themselves. Um, they're out there doing the fishing um, while also taking on maybe a new um, skill set or a new variety of tasks which can be very like, challenging in developing essentially a, a marketing and sales side to your business. Um, and so as 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 scale your local as the local catch network started to recognize that, it was really interested in finding ways to build some sort of programming to help build the skill sets of these kind of community-based values-driven producers across the nation. Um, and just kind of realizing that um, in order to help these businesses build, thrive, and potentially even scale up, um, there's just a variety of different knowledge, skills, and networks that are needed to continue to support them. And this Scale Your Local Catch program is kind of one of those tools that the network has developed and started um, to implement. Uh, and we essentially have built the Scale Your Local Catch program from past work we've done through EcoTrust um, from 2017 through the pretty much the beginning of this year. EcoTrust had a program that ran um, called the Egg of the Middle Accelerator Program for farmers, ranchers, and fishers. Um, and once again, it was this the Scale Your Local Catch program is essentially um, adapted from, modeled, and um, from that program that we ran through EcoTrust. It's not the same, but it's definitely kind of grown and outgrowth of that. It's been exciting to be a part of. Okay, Maya, do you wanna go ahead and take it away? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the nuts and bolts of the program, um, the curriculum, the expectations, timelines, things like that. But at really the basic level, the Scale Your Local Catch program is a five month virtual program that is focused on business development, um, with really with the goal of assisting producers in refining and solidifying their business knowledge and practices as well as connecting with a community of like-minded producers. Um, we are focused on um, working with seafood businesses that are in the United States. Um, and as Tyson mentioned at the beginning of this session, it's really awesome to have folks from all over the country um, be able to share lessons learned and challenges that folks experience. 
as well as to see some of the unique challenges that people face given their geographic region. Um, the sessions are virtual held on, on Google Meet this year. We're going to be meeting um, primarily using Google Meet, and they'll be held weekly. Um, typically, we have two sessions a week, and they are going to be held from December through March. And we specifically choose to focus our trainings during that time period, obviously because of the availability of um, fishermen during the fishing season and off season. Um, the other really great part of our program is connecting folks with resources and service providers. Um, so we every year really try to not only provide like knowledge and tools, but also try and connect people with like resource providers like CPAs, bookkeepers, lawyers, people who can really support um, the implementation of some of the knowledge that producers are learning. So here are um, our partners, trainers, and funders. So the Scotia Local Catch Program is funded through the USDA. Um, that is our primary funding source. And our trainers at this time, we work with um, a woman named Winona Doris, who runs CFO for nonprofits. Um, she definitely has a lot of experience working in nonprofits, but I would say um, has equally as much experience working in the for-profit sector and has a wealth of knowledge um, related to bookkeeping and accounting. So Winona focuses primarily on bookkeeping, accounting, insurance. Um, she also teaches our entity formation session and our taxation sessions. Um, we partner with Farm Commons, which some of you may have um, heard of, to host our um, labor session. So they have adapted some of their curriculum that they use for farming and ranching to issues in seafood and fishing uh, labor issues. So we've been working with, with Rachel Armstrong and her team at Farm Commons. And then we work with a woman named Jill Neumeister who owns Orca Design Group. Um, she is um, an indigenous woman who runs a marketing and branding firm based in Seattle, I believe. Is that right, Tyson? Washington somewhere. It may not be Seattle. Um, say that again? Gig Harbor. Gig, thank you, Gig Harbor. Um, and Jill um, leads our marketing and storytelling sessions. And then as well, we have a partnership with Davis Wright Tremaine, which is a um, international, I believe, law firm that has expertise in um, seafood and fishing businesses. So they host a session that is focused on contracts and partnerships and making sure that your um, business is thinking about risk and mitigating risk through legal documents like contracts and supporting you in solidifying the partnerships that, that you have in your business. And then of course, EcoTrust, um, Tyson and I are supporting this program as coordinators. Um, I will be leading a session on access to capital this year, which will be super fun. Um, so yeah. This is our core group of folks that we work with through the program. I have a quick question on the David before you go forward. The yeah. David, right, and Tremaine. Um, do you had said international mm -hmm. again in Louisiana? Our all of our contracts and such are different because Louisiana mm -hmm. law is different than everywhere else. But I'm curious whether or not they are doing international contracts. Is that what you were? Yeah, they, they have expertise in that. Yeah. So for exports of mm -hmm. seafood. Okay. I'm just, just want to mm -hmm. mark that down. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. Davis Wright Tremaine can support a lot of different things. They have a lot of expertise in a lot of different areas. So um, 
I, I certainly understand the whole mm -hmm. legal and and insurance and contracts and all of that. I, I get all of that, mm -hmm. but but we have uh, partners to do those things here. The international sales is not something that we've looked for partners yet with, and so that's mm -hmm. a curiosity to me. Thank you. Yeah, interesting. Thanks, Anne. Okay, so. Here is in more depth, I mentioned some of these sessions already. This is um, what you can expect in terms of the curriculum for the program. Um, we typically will host um, some of these topics have multiple sessions and we will host um, like a, a training session where we're delivering core content. And then we will usually have like a Q&A session after the core content is delivered to answer any questions. Um, but we have evolved our programming and really focused on trying to ensure that everything we teach is um, relevant to seafood businesses. And so, as I mentioned, we do, we work with Jill on marketing and storytelling. Um, we have a training with the USDA on value-added producer grants, which um, I think is becoming maybe more popular or maybe seafood businesses are becoming more aware that this is the program that they can benefit from, um, which is awesome. And I think last year we had quite a few of our cohort participants um, apply for that funding. Um, we discuss business structure and entity formation. Um, we talk about fishing labor, insurance, and understanding your, the risk in your business and making sure that you are properly covered. Um, we spend a lot of time talking about tax and accounting and how those two things are interrelated. Um, and then, of course, a, a session on contracts and partnerships and um, this year, we're going to have an access to capital session and then an additional session that is focused on crowdfunding, which was a response from our cohort last year that was really interested in learning more about sort of creative um, capital and, and crowdfunding. And then as well, we try to um, structure the program so that we have opportunities for networking with the cohort. So for example, last year, the cohort was really interested in talking about how to make seafood more accessible to the community at a price point that would work for folks across the income spectrum. And um, we hosted a networking opportunity where someone in the cohort that had that knowledge came and sort of talked about their experience and so um, we're hoping that we can do more of that kind of peer to peer sharing um, because there's so much wisdom just within like the cohort itself. And so we like to try to find ways to elevate that knowledge and share that knowledge across the cohort. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is that we are currently exploring the idea of creating a mentorship program, um, which would enable folks who maybe have participated in this program before or are just a more established business um, to mentor folks who are maybe just getting started with direct marketing or newer in business. And so we are hoping that we will be able to launch that program this winter. And so um, stay tuned. We'll um, make sure at the end of this session to send a link to the local Catch Network um, newsletter where I think a lot of that will be shared. So just wanted to make sure that folks were aware of that as well. Okay, so um, the so the Scary Local Catch program is a competitive process. There's an application um, that we will share out during the session. Um, and essentially, producers who are interested in the program will apply using the application um, that's listed on Local Catch Network's website. And we have um, a team of people who review those applications. And so we wanted to share in the spirit of transparency how we um, evaluate applications and really what we're looking for when we're evaluating um, who is going to be a part of the cohort. So we really, um, what we're looking for is 
that businesses have been in business for two years and have tangible experience in business planning, strategy, finance, and direct marketing. Um, this is not a pro this program is not a good fit, I don't believe, for people who are just starting their business, who are a startup and don't have um, a year or two of running their business under their belt. Um, we also um, are looking for businesses who identify as small or medium-sized seafood businesses. Um, we are looking for alignment with the Local Catch Network's core values. And Tyson, I might just ask that you paste those core values in the chat. I'm not going to cover them today, but I would encourage if you're interested in this program to take a look at the core values of the Local Catch Network. Um, and just check, check for alignment. Um, we're also looking for businesses who are seeking to engage or already engaging in food justice, anti-racism, and food sovereignty work, and are really working to transform our current food system into a more equitable one. Um, and also, we are looking for businesses who are committed to equitable labor practices, community building, and focused on increasing access of seafood within their community. Um, it's also really important that the folks who are owning, managing the business are available and committed to participating in the sessions. Um, they are recorded, but we find it's most helpful for folks who are a part of making daily business decisions to be a part of the trainings. So for example, if you are um, running your business with a partner, we would love to have both partners um, attend sessions because we find that sometimes the flow of information between business partners um, isn't always happening. And we like to ensure that um, that the businesses are well poised to actually implement um, some of what they're learning. Um, we also ask that folks, um, um, yeah, ask that folks respond to program related communication. We have a cohort listserv that we put together, um, which is a great way for us to be in communication with the cohort, but also for the cohort to be in communication with each other. And then as well, we do send out evaluate an evaluation at the end of the year to just measure the impact of the program and report out to the USDA. And so we do ask that folks who are accepted into the program are able to, to complete those evaluations. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is that we are giving preference to producers who identify as Black, Indigenous, Latinx, or identify as a person of color. We're also giving preference to women people who are serving low income or what the USDA considers low access community um, communities, excuse me, and also are giving preference to producers who produce a value added product. Okay. So here are the commitments and expectations. So um, after a business is accepted into the program, we will send what we call a business health assessment to each producer to fill out, um, which is essentially a survey that helps our team and trainers understand where you are in your business sophistication and an understanding of some of the concepts that we teach. Um, of course, we ask that participants attend all of the weekly sessions and virtual trainings that we have. Um, we ask that folks engage with the technical assistance providers and other Sclera Local Catch participants. Um, we, our last cohort was super engaged, even though we were virtual, and we really tried to instill a sense of community from the beginning and make a lot of room for um, as much as possible, like informal connection. And so we ask that folks um, make room for that as a part of the program um, as much as possible. And then as well, a lot of the sessions will have like some free work associated with them, like, for example, um, for the insurance session, the homework is to like dig out your insurance policies and review them. 
Um, or like for the accounting session, one of them is like print off your chart of accounts. And if you don't have a chart of accounts, that's fine. But um, there is a level of pre-work that's required for some of the sessions. And it's important that folks um, have time to do that and commit to doing that. Um, and then as well as a part of the evaluation, we do ask for some business data, but we keep everything um, confidential. We don't share out individual business data. Um, we would share out potentially like collective business data around the cohort in terms of like collective sales or collective jobs. Um, so we do ask that the businesses that are part of the program provide some business data and, and um, commit to filling out those evaluations. Um, I'm going to paste a link in the chat to our schedule at a glance, which is, um, I think it's pretty close to being final. Um, and this basically lists out the dates and times and sessions. And so um, you know, as you consider whether or not you would be a good fit for the program or whether or not you'd be able to attend the sessions, I would just encourage you to take a look at the program schedule at a glance, um, just so you can kind of see the flow of how the sessions go and what time they are, um, and just kind of gut check whether you would be able to commit to showing up and participating. This is Anne. I have one other question as you. Yeah, sure. Um, and maybe I missed it because I was I had to take a call real quick right at the beginning. Did you say how many people you have in each cohort? On yeah, average? thanks, Anne. Tyson mentioned it briefly at the beginning, but I'll I'll just share that we are looking to accept a cohort of around 15 people or 15 businesses rather. Right. Yeah, that's good. I'm sorry I missed it. I apologize. No worries. No, yeah. Thanks for the for the question. Okay, so here is more detail on how to apply and next steps. So um, you can apply using this link that I'm going to paste in the chat right now. Um, it's a link to a, a survey, essentially. The application deadline is October 14th. Um, and then our team, as I mentioned, is going to be reviewing applications and going through a review and like scoring process to determine who the final cohort is going to be. Um, we are aiming to notify applicants of their status early to mid-November. And then we'll be sending out the business health assessment for folks to fill out at the end of November um, with the goal of getting all that information back before the kickoff, which is um, early December. And then, as I mentioned, we're going to be hosting the virtual sessions between December and March. Um, there is a break in there for the holiday season, um, and there are a couple of um, weeks where the training sessions are a little bit lighter than others. So do take a look at that program at a glance um, if you're interested. And then our goal is to wrap up the program by the end of March. So maybe we can transition to any questions. I, I had a question. Um... I heard you mention the value added product portion of it uh, being one of the things that um, you wanted participants to, um, one of the criteria to meet. And so uh, I harvest salmon um, traditionally and ethically on the, on the river. Um, and so part of what my business plan is, is that um, I'm, I'm fishing or I'm um, buying in like a 50 mile radius and it's tribal to tribal so everything is being tracked and so it all falls under this conservation effort that you know is basically how we manage the river and have the seasons you know and, and um, so all my my fish are ticketed and you can trace my fish back to the day they were pulled out of the river too and so that way folks know you know, because like the salmon that most folks are familiar with is potentially a farmed fish or uh, and, and also it's it's been harvested and then flown somewhere else to be processed, packaged and then sent back to us. And 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 I, I was just watching something that was talking about how 
um, I, and I, I'm probably um, going to quote this wrong, but I think it was something like 70% of the seafood that we harvest goes elsewhere because we don't actually eat it. And so that's why the bulk of it is taken initially and processed elsewhere. And then it's cheaper for them and the time spent, the freshness, they get that they, where everywhere else where it goes, you know, um, gets the benefit of having fresh seafood. Um, and so that was one of one of the things that I put in our business plan was that everything that I'm doing is within basically a 50 mile radius and also within a few days. Um, and so you're getting the freshest local fish in season um, that I can offer you, you know, at a, at a, a decent rate, you know, at a, at a, you know, at market rate. Um, and then I just move through this, the sub seasons of fish. And so I was just kind of wondering if I'm actually, you know, something that, that, if that would fit what you guys are looking for or. Are you, are you processing your fish at all right now? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. That's, there's, there, I think there's like two things that are like, one, if you're processing your fish, like putting a knife to it, heading it or gutting it or filleting yes. it or smoking it. Sorry, or, I suppose I should have said, yeah, all yeah, of all, the above. Yeah, all those things are value add products. Yeah. And then I would say like the story you just told is like its own really essential value as well. Like that's definitely, yeah. Yeah. Okay, right on. Yeah, I have the HACCP certif certification as well. And so I, I think um, part of why I... I like I said, with my grandparents having the business and fishing and having the legacy that they've had, um, I'm just trying to move it in this new direction. And then that's what I was hoping was that I wasn't too fledgling or new that I could, you, you know, jump in here and then um, be a part of this moving forward. Yeah. Uh, uh, thought process that you guys have branching out, but still um, keeping in mind that it's sustainable and it's in season, you know what I mean? And so I'm, um, yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Oops. Yeah, thank you. It's great to learn more about your business, Raven, and what you're up to. It's yeah. really beautiful. I would too. Mm -hmm. And Jenna, I see your heads up that the Qualtrics link, and I'm assuming that's to the application, is not currently active, which is, um, I'm not sure why that is, but that's something we'll have to flag with. Um, Jordan or Josh or the university and kind of get that get that fixed. <clears throat> I'll double check that link too, just to see if maybe for some reason it was the wrong link. So I have a question. Um, so December through March is the off season for many fisheries, but for the Dungeness fishery in Washington, for example, that's kind of peak season. So I'm I'm wondering, and I know you can't um, accommodate everybody, but I'm wondering if you plan to offer um, kind of other times of the year to target different fishermen? At this point in time, um, this, is the, this is the only one and the only time we have it planned for. Mm -hmm. That's a great, great idea. And it's definitely something that I think um, we, we talk about often. And as you said, it can be, especially with uh, a nationwide program like this one, like there's just no necessarily good time <laughs> to do it. Um, but that's a really good point as far as especially kind of like the West Coast Dungeness crab fishery. It's a big one. And yeah, it's right, it's right during the same exact time. So again, I might have missed it at the beginning, but what, how many of these cohorts have you done? How far, you know, how many years have you done this? So this is the second year of the oh, Scale Your Local Catch program. Okay, yeah. excellent. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm I'm very familiar with accelerator programs for just regular small businesses. Mm -hmm. And this appears to be right on track with that. Um, but I hear what um, Gina uh, is saying that it's it's very difficult to get fisheries you know we've struggled with the fact that you know you got shrimpers you got crabbers you got fin fish you got oystermen and it runs all seasons and yeah. and crawfish too uh down here so it it makes it very um complicated to offer programs that span all those species and so i was just curious um you know how that works for y'all we 
we are also working on right now, and you know, this is just something totally different. As the university, we have just created a, a, <clears throat> a seafood processing demonstration lab. So I've seen the one in um, Eugene, uh, in Oregon, and it's lovely. And uh, we won't be quite that um, sophisticated yet. We don't have all of that equipment, but but basics to do to help people create these pop value added um, processes because that's the key, you know, going forward. It it seems like. Yeah. Yeah, the, the processing, the infrastructure logistics for especially these smaller businesses or businesses that want to scale up or, you know, yeah, it can be become real barrier to trying to right. trying to make that happen and make your dream work. Yeah. So so I'm I'm interested. I think Louisiana, there are a lot of people that fishermen that are realizing that they maybe need to move up in the distribution chain, especially after COVID and take on more of that, um, that process. And so uh, having access to this kind of information would be very helpful. And, yeah. you know, not interested in recreating the wheel if y'all yeah. already have one rolling. Yeah, if there's a couple of businesses or how many other businesses you might be working with that, um, you know, have that couple of years under their belt where they've already been trying to sell direct and been working on those things. I think like it would be a great fit for for this, I understand. For this program. Yeah. yeah. I, I we may be too late for this year, but um I'm interested for future sessions. That's why I was asking how often she so all the intention is to do this annually. Yeah, yeah. That that would be, I believe that's the the intention. And um, you know, right now we have um, the funding for the program this year. And I think there's just more work that needs to be done as, you know, this is nonprofit work and a nonprofit program. There is more fundraising to be done for the future years coming up. Totally understand. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Would you consider a seafood distributor as an appropriate seafood business? I think it's somebody we could talk to. Yeah, it depends on, I guess, what the, I think if there's a lot of, Maybe there's a lot of nuances between like distributors and maybe what they're doing or what their service is or, um, yeah, I think there's somebody we'd be, we'd definitely talk to and see if it's a good fit for the program. Okay, thanks. Well, I'm going to paste a link. We have a frequently asked questions doc, paste that in the chat too, just for full transparency and other questions that have come up around um, the types of entities that we are looking to work with, how we define seafood business, um, how we distinguish like small versus medium-sized seafood business. So encourage y'all to um, take a look at the FAQs as well. Awesome. Well, you want to close this out, Tyson? Oh, sure. Uh, so just, uh, I guess the reminder is the applications are due October 14th. Um, and then uh, the applicants will be notified um, of the status of being accepted or declined and for whatever reason that might be um, by the middle of November. Um, and our first session will be happening kind of, I think the first or the second week of December. And then we kind of keep moving on from there all the way through the end of March. Um, so if you, you all have any further questions or if you um, share a little bit about this program with somebody that might be interested and they have questions or want to learn more, uh, please do have them reach out to me. Um, or you can also try Jordan. Um, I would say maybe have them try me first. Um, Jordan's got a lot going on right now and she's currently in the midst of planning for the local seafood summit, um, which is going to be October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd up in Girdwood, Alaska. So she's got quite a bit on her plate at the moment. Can, can I ask about that just real quick? Is that um, a training or is it 
what? Yeah, how do you find out about that? Yeah, the local seafood summit. Let me pull up a link for you. I think the local seafood summit at this point is sold out. They might have a waiting list that's in place that you could put your name on or individuals that you might be supporting that might want to come to something like this. Um, okay, yep, yeah, there it is. Copy that link for you. <clears throat> and so the local seafood summit's actually a, a three-day conference. Um, for direct marketing, direct sales, seafood businesses up in Alaska, um, and uh, generally for the local catch network and the members of the network to um, share, learn from each other, um, and just find a place to actually get together in person. Yeah, got it. And if you have any questions about local catch network, if you're new to it, or if you want to learn more about anything about the network, happy to talk with you more and answer any questions you might have about the network as well. Thanks much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Raven. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Jenna. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah like thanks y'all for joining. Okay. Thank y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye now. Thank you. <laughs>